So re regarding uh, background staining um, due to a sample issue, if you're using a fluorescent detection, uh, you'll see, if you just look at a tissue section without any staining, you might see some uh, autofluorescent, which obscures the, uh, the signal that you're trying to detect for the protein of interest. And it's usually something that happens in the green channel, so you may want to try moving to a different um, a fluorophore with a different wavelength, either substituting a different secondary antibody conjugated to a red fluorochrome might address the issue. Or you just look at the tissue without any staining and see which channel, uh, red versus green versus far red, gives you the, the least autofluorescence. Uh, and then for enzymatic detection, um, endogenous enzymes can be an issue uh, if you're detecting uh, the substrate will simply react with those enzymes. It's more of an issue in frozen tissue where the enzyme's activity is still intact versus the paraffin embedded tissue where it's usually been knocked out by the processing, the heat, the heat of the paraffin processing. So, but you, if you do see some, the control would be to simply put some substrate onto a slide. If you see some staining, you, you'll need to quench it using um, with peroxide or for, for phosphatase with labamisole. Off-target staining due to a sample issue that has endogenous biotin. This is an issue if you're using this avidin biotin complex reagent for detection. That'll stick to the uh, directly to any endogenous biotin. And again, you'll you'll see that if you just incubate a section with the uh, with just this ABC complex. And if you see some staining, the way to address that is to um, incubate it with a sequential avidin and biotin. And there, there are kits available for doing that, but basically solutions of avidin and biotin. That'll, that'll block the endogenous biotin. And then finally, um, moving to reagents, off-target background staining due to a reagent uh, difficulty. Um, if the blocking is insufficient, you want to check for contamination of the serum stock if you're using a serum or try a different reagent, for example, 5% BSA. Uh, for the primary antibody, uh, testereal dilutions of the primary, you might find that using a lower dilution and incubating at 4 degrees overnight uh, will reduce the amount of background staining. And you can increase the number of wash steps, and you can include detergent in the antibody diluents and the wash buffer, for example, 0.1% Tritonex 100 or tween 20 at the same same uh, percentage concentration. And the primary and secondary antibody controls, um, the, the purpose of the isotype control in place of the primary reveals presence of unblocked FC receptors on various white blood cells, for example, B cells and macrophages. So this is a control, you're just simply leaving out the primary or you're just a substituting an isotype control for the primary antibody or just using the secondary only without any primary antibody it reveals detection of uh, either endogenous immunoglobulin that the secondary antibody is sticking to or um, FC receptors if the secondary antibody is binding to these FC receptors on white blood cells. 